Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will be talking about an interesting topic that is C-sharp weight. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So, if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. First, we will define what exactly c -sharp weight is and which header file and the assembly we use to define c -sharp weight. Later, the time it takes to complete execution is defined as c -sharp weight. The namespace or library used to declare c -sharp weight is system.threading. Task and the assembly used to declare weight in c -sharp is system.runtime.dll. We'll look at some c -sharp weight overloads in our next topic. So, five types of c -sharp weight overloads are disabled. First, we have a weight time span. Second, we have a weight cancellation token. Third, we have c -sharp weight in 32. Fourth, we have weight in 32 cancellation token. And finally, we have a weight in 32 cancellation token. Let's try to define all five c -sharp weight overloads. So, the first overload is the weight time span defined as waiting for the task to finish execution within a given time interval. The second overload we have is a wait cancellation token defined as waiting for the task to finish its execution if a cancellation token is cancelled before the task is completed. The wait is terminated. The third overload is wait in 32 which states that wait for the task to finish execution in each number of milliseconds. The next overload C-sharp wait function is defined as waiting for the task to finish execution. The wait is terminated if a timeout interval expires or a cancellation token is cancelled before the task is completed. The fifth and the final overload of C-sharp wait is wait. The wait for the task to finish execution. Now in this tutorial, we'll go through all the five of these overloads in a great detail complete with the code examples. So first, as shown on my screen, we have the wait time span. The parameters we use for the wait time span are timeout and time span representing the number of milliseconds to wait or minus one milliseconds to wait indefinitely. The return type for this wait time span is boolean, which will be true if the task has completed within the time limit, otherwise false. Next, I will talk about exceptions used in the wait time span. So we use the three exceptions in wait time span. First, we have an object disposed exception, which indicates that the task has been disposed of. The second exception is the argument out of range exception used when the timeout is less than minus one milliseconds, representing an infinite timeout, or the timeout exceeds maximum value. The third exception is an aggregate exception used when the assignment was canceled, a task canceled exception object or an exception thrown during task execution can be found in the inner exceptions collection. The information about the exception or exceptions is contained in an inner exceptions collection. Now, we will have some information about wait time span. Wait time span is a synchronization method that causes the calling thread to wait for the current task instance to finish until one of the following condition is met. That is, task is met successfully, task is cancelled or an exception is thrown, you handle an aggregation exception exception in this case. Timeout interval has expired, the current thread resumes execution and the method returns false in this case. Next, examine the wait time span code. Now on my screen, we have an example for the wait. The following example begins with a task that generates 2 million random integer ranging from 0 to 100 and computes their mean. The wait time span method is used in this particular example to wait for the application to finish within 120 milliseconds. If the application finishes normally, the task displays the sum and the mean of the random numbers generated. If the timeout interval expires, the example displays a message before exiting. Now let's execute this code and see the output. So there you go, the code got successfully executed 
and the total sum of the numbers is being displayed here and the mean value of the numbers is being displayed here. Now with that, let's get back to the presentation. Next, as shown on my screen, we have weight cancellation token with the parameter cancellation token defined as while waiting for the task to finish. Keep an eye out for cancellation token. Next, we have written type which is void. Use written type void to indicate that method or a local function does not have a return value. Finally, we have exception handling. Finally, we have exception handling. The first exception is operation cancelled exception. The cancellation token was deactivated. The second exception is the object disposed exception used when the task has disposed of. The final exception handling is aggregation exception which is used for cancelled assignments. Now we have some important information about a weight cancellation token. Weight cancellation token generates a cancelled weight which causes the current thread to wait until the following events occur. 1. The task has completed and next the cancellation token has been revoked. In this case the call to the weight cancellation token method throws the operation cancelled exception. Now let's try to execute an example based on weight cancellation token. The following example shows how to use a cancellation token to cancel waiting for a task to finish. The cancellation token source is called when a task is launched. The cancel method is used to cancel any of the token's source cancellation tokens followed by 2 second delay. It should be noted that the task has not been passed the cancellation token and thus not cancellable. The application thread calls the task. The wait method is used to wait for the task to finish but it is cancelled once the cancellation token is cancelled and an operation cancelled exception is thrown. The exception handler locks the exception and then sleeps for 3 seconds. As the example output demonstrate, the delay allows the task to complete in a ran to complete state. Now let's execute the example. So there you go, you can see the wait has been cancelled. Task is running and task ended delay. And you can see the RAND2 completion exception has been thrown. Now let's look at the third overload of C sharp weight, which is int32 as shown on my screen. We have a parameter called milliseconds timeout in 32 defined as the amount of time to wait in milliseconds or infinite that is minus 1 to wait indefinitely. The next written type is boolean which returns true if the task was completed within the time limit otherwise it returns false. Following that we have exception handling so we use three exception handlers here first we have object disposed exception the task has been completed the second exception handling is argument out of range exception which is defined in milliseconds the timeout in a negative number other than minus one representing an infinite timeout third we have an aggregate exception defined as the task was cancelled the task cancelled exception object is found in the inner exceptions collection an exception was thrown during the task execution the inner exceptions collections contain information about the exception or exceptions some critical considerations for waiting int32 token. Wait int32 is a synchronization method that causes the calling thread to wait for the current task instance to finish until one of the following conditions is met. The task is completed, the task is cancelled or an exception is thrown. You handle an aggregate exception in this case. The milliseconds timeout interval has expired. The current thread resumes exception and the method returns false in this case. Now, Let's execute an example based on wait in 32. The following example begins a task that generates 2 million random integers ranging from 0 to 100 and computes their mean. The wait in 32 method is used in this example to wait for the application to finish within 120 milliseconds. If the application finishes normally, the task displays the sum and mean of the random numbers generated. If the timeout interval expires, the example displays a message before exiting. Now, let's execute the program and see the output. So there you go. The total of random numbers generated between 0 to 100 is here, which is displayed over here, which is 10,11,454 and the mean is 50. Now the timeout expires and it is 20 lakhs. 
Now let's discuss the next one, which is the fourth overload int 32 cancellation token. The parameters for this overload are cancellation token and in32 which are already defined. The next we have a boolean value that returns true if the task is completed within the time limit otherwise returns false. Following that we have exception handling. The first exception to be handled is the operation cancel exception which is thrown when the cancellation token is cancelled. When the task is disposed of, the second exception is object disposed exception. The third exception is the argument out of range exception, which is thrown when the milliseconds timeout is a negative number other than minus one, which represents an infinite timeout. Finally, when the task is cancelled, we got an aggregate exception. The task cancelled exception object can be found in the inner exceptions collection. An exception was thrown while the task was being carried out. The information about the exception or exceptions is contained in the inner exceptions collection. Let's look at some key points about the wait cancellation token in 32. Wait in 32 cancellation token is a synchronization method that causes the calling thread to wait for the current task instance to finish until one of the following conditions is met. The task is completed, the task is cancelled or exception is thrown. You handle an aggregate exception. In this case, the cancellation token has been deactivated. The call to the wait in 32 cancellation token method throws an operation cancel exception in this case. The milliseconds timeout interval has expired and the current thread resumes execution and the method returns false in this case. Now let's look at an example based on int32 cancellation token. The wait in 32 cancellation token method is used in the following example to provide both a timeout value and a cancellation token that can be used to end the wait for a task completion. A new thread is started and the cancellation token method is executed which pauses before calling the cancellation token source. To cancel the cancellation tokens, we use the cancel method. The task is then launched after a 2 second delay. The wait method is then called to wait for the task completion and is provided with both a brief timeout value and cancellation token. Now, let's try to execute this program and see the output. As you can see, the program got successfully executed and about to wait completion of task 3, cancel the cancellation token from thread 7, wait completed normally, false, and the task time is still running. Now finally, we have the fifth and final overload which is the wait function. As shown on my screen, there are no parameters for this overload and the return type is set to boolean. Use the return type to void to indicate that the method or local function does not return any value. Finally, we have exception handling for the wait function which is object disposed exception and thrown when the task is disposed of. The second exception is an aggregate exception thrown when the task is cancelled. A cancelled exception object can be found in the inner exceptions collection or an exception was thrown while the task was being carried out. The information about the exception or exceptions is contained in the inner exceptions collection. Now let's look at some points about the wait function. The wait function is a synchronization method that tells the calling thread to wait until the current execution is finished. If the current task hasn't started yet, the wait method removes it from the scheduler and executes it in line on the current thread. If it is unable to do so or if the current task has already begun execution, it blocks the calling thread until the task is finished. For a better learning experience, let's go and execute a code demonstration of the wait function. The following example begins a task that generates 2 million random integers ranging from 0 to 100 and computes their mean. The wait method is used in this example to ensure that the task is completed before the application is terminated. Now let's execute the code and see the output. So there you go, the code got successfully executed and the output is displayed on the screen. Let's get back to the presentation. And with that we have come to an end of this video. If you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session or if you need the code that we have executed in this session then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. 
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.